You are listening to the Park Flyer Podcast, where we discuss our RC adventures. Welcome to the Park Flyer Podcast, where we discuss the ups and downs of the new RC Flyer. Join your hosts, Michael and Jay, as they take flight at the park. Now on with the show. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Park Flyer Podcast. I'm Michael. I'm still out traveling in Texas now. Uh, but normally from Arizona. With me always are my good friends. Jay from the hills of Texas. And Shannon G in Mesa AZ, but actually in West Phoenix right now. There you go. All right. He's, he's trying to well, run some errands. I think he's getting ready to head out on a trip. I'm on the road. Jay's the only one that's actually really where he's supposed to be. And uh, the good news is I think I'm going to be in his neck of the woods uh, shortly. It's at least coming up in a few days, and hopefully we'll get to go out and do some flying and and that kind of thing. But uh, other than that, I have been on the road. But, Jay, you've been lucky enough to go out and actually do some flying. Yeah, between uh, myself and Jim, we've kind of had a free schedule. So we've met up once or twice and went flying. And I think uh, last week or uh, last podcast or so, uh, I was talking about Jim. Uh, we maidened his soft with the camel. Um, yep. Which turned out to be a good thing, and it was uh, it, it turned out very well, um, even though it was exciting maiden. Um, and th- and so this time we went out and we maidened it again, and this time it was under a, a little bit more controlled environment, and it went very well. <laughs> yeah. Now this is a gas airplane too, though, right? This is a gas airplane. So, uh, yeah. like I said, uh, Jim came to the uh, realization that. Nitro fuel has like gone stupid uh, for picking up some nitro. So what used to be thirty dollars a gallon, you know, twenty five, thirty dollars a gallon now is you know well over you know double that. Yeah, um, I think sixty six dollars. Um, I know yeah. he was. Sa- yeah, that, I, I know he was saying by the time like if you go ahead and order a gallon. Which, if you're going to order it, you have to do it, I think, like in three gallons, and therefore you have to pay this hazmat fee, plus the shipping fee, plus, you know, some other crazy hazmat something tax, whatever, on top of that, um, to have it shipped to your house, um, which just jacks the price up to be, you know, into the rid- ridiculous zone. So, you know, it, it's cheaper just to go on gas that you pick up down at the, you know, around the corner at the... Uh, Happy Mart. So that's what he's he's doing with this fleet of nitro planes. He's he's basically exchanging the engines from nitro to gas. So that's what he's gotcha. you know he's slowly doing. And so he basically did two planes. One was a stick that he has. I want to say it's like a ninety, you know, nitro ninety ish uh, stick. You know, it's fairly big. And then. Um, like a he big also stick, had this right? small forty, yeah, big stick, and, and then yeah. he had a, uh, uh, then he has a um, like a forty-six uh, size plane, uh, meaning forty-six as you know the size of the wingspan. Uh, mm-hmm. Usually takes you know I want to say like a forty, a, a glow forty, um, to sixty, and he you know in it, and so he basically was able to get like a nine cc, ten cc gas motor to go in for that and that's what we've been flying the dolphin uh for several several days now you know for you know weeks or a month now um so he's been trying to help me out to get used to flying gas because i have uh two models that uh are you know that are set up for gas and uh i have no experience very low experience you know maintaining them fueling them up, you know, knowing what to do to go through the sequence of that. So Jim's been gracious enough to, when we get out there, he's like, you know, actually, I, I I think it works out for him because he's like, Hey man, uh, fuel a plane up. And I'm like, Oh, okay. And I run over there, you know, my, my little, uh, outfit, you know, and I run over there and I gas his plane, I gas the plane up and, and, uh, and he's like, okay, you know, let's go ahead and start it. Hey, warm the engine up. Okay. You know, so I go through the whole thing. I get started warming it up. Um, so it's smart, it, man. it's mutually beneficial for him and I, so when things don't go right, then he steps in, corrects some stupid mistake that I did. But I, I sure. do have a follow-up to the Southwood camel story. You know, as you know, we, uh, he took it off, was maidening it, uh, was coming in a couple of landings. <laughs> I like, I like the engine sound. Came in for a couple <laughs> of landings and then the, uh, oh, <laughs> that was you. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, so his, so uh, he was coming in for a landing. The wind kicked up, kind of, kind of got threw him off off key. The plane was kind of going around. I had to reach in and, and help him out. Um, it turned out that um, as with all things, like with you know, I used to do uh, accidents and uh, you know prevention of accidents and stuff and investigations. And as as for most accidents or mishaps, as we call them in the Air Force. For mishaps that that happen, it's never one thing. It's always a series of events that happened that put you in that put that either make the mishap happen or put you in a situ, situation that you can that causes the mishap. And as it turned out, you know, we were thinking, oh, it was just the wind that that kicked in there. You know, maybe a little weight and balance issue, um, and 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 that was it. But as it turns out, Jim got home later that evening or the next day. He decided to take the wings off and just go through the plane to check it out, um, you know, to take a look at it because it, it had been making a, a funny sound. And I guess that funny sound was the clunk rattling around in the gas can. I mean, the gas tank, not gas can, the, the gas tank. So uh, he goes and, you know, he takes the thing apart and he was thinking that it was either stuck uh, it was stuck in a corner, or it folded in on itself or something. And mm-hmm. so he, he takes it apart, takes a, you know, finally gets to flashlight in there and he's looking and, and he's like, huh, that's funny. The, the clunks, you know, he's moving the, the plane around, the clunks moving like it should, but he's like, yeah, that's kind of, it's, it's still not rolling around in there. Right. And as he's looking, he notices that there's no, there's no tubing that goes from the front of the, of the tank to the clunk the clunk's just rolling around in there like it should be but there's no gas tube connecting the two so he goes he goes yeah jay it was a good thing that when you were flying that when you took over control that you didn't go to try to climb that you weren't trying to climb the plane like at 45 degrees or trying to gain altitude or that you did any acrobatics or you rolled the plane or you did you just kind of flew it around in a pattern and you know attempted to, to land it if you had you you know, done any acrobatics whatsoever, or even done a, a, a semi-steep climb, the plane would have, you know, it, the quit. engine would have died or quit on you. And I was like, oh, man, that, that would not have been good. I said, so it was, you know, we were lucky that the, the we had fueled the plane fully and that it was sucking it straight out of the brass, you know, connection, you know, so the right. fuel was coming through there. And that, you know, basically we couldn't have, I couldn't have, you know, in my mind, that's like, you can't get over 15, you know, uh, a 15 degree incline in my head, you know, to stop that thing from sucking fuel. But right, right. like you said, had I been doing something where I was pulling 30, 30 to 35 to 45, you know, degrees of bank, you know, we might've been in, having some troubles. So luckily I had just kept the plane straight and level. Uh, enough to land it and i was trying to you know make the plane descend the whole time or at least maintain or descend so i was at least in that positive um incline for suckage if that's such a word or wow. where, where all the gas all the yeah. gases in the front yeah getting sucked out the front yeah exactly that's incredible that's incredible the, tubing, by the way was the tubing gone yeah. or just loose there was no tubing at all no it like was it it, oh, it, it there, totally okay. disintegrated it 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 was in wow. the ether. It was, it was not there. So it, it turned to a wrong a kind goo. of tubing in. I don't know if it was the wrong tubing or, like I said, he he hadn't flown the plane in like six or eight years. Oh, so, okay. So that would explain I, so, I, I will tell you, though, not only that, but um, there is different tubing for nitro and gas. There gas. are two mm-hmm. different yes. types. And if you use the nitro tubing and gas, you can dissolve it. Yeah. Yep. Well, that might have happened because it, it might have, have, it might have came it with the tank. It might have came with the plane, or it mm-hmm. might have been one that he had and just stuck in there, thinking he'd replace mm-hmm. it later. You know, but yeah. he didn't have a problem with it for that year or two that he was flying it, and then you forget about it after four years mm-hmm. sitting in the closet or you know in the garage, <laughs> and then slowly just decays. <laughs> so yeah, he uh. he uh, he when he looks like, like you said, he was like looking at her. He's like, yeah, and I just noticed the clunk was. There's nothing attached to it. And so I was like, oh, no. <laughs> so um, this all kind of continues on with the story for, for this time. We, he came back out to re remaiden it again. This time he had gone through the plane from head to toe, made sure he tightened up everything, had replaced the, the if you guys remember, the front landing gear. There was something squirrely with it. 
mm-hmm. had fixed the front landing gear again and um, made sure everything was tight, added some glue where he thought some things were loose. Uh, he got a brand new tank, replaced the tank. Um, but uh, instead of getting the exact same tank or replacing the tubing, like I said, he bought a new tank, um, one that was, you know, gas. I'm making air quotes. You may not be able to see. It was a gas equivalent tank. Um, you know, the fittings were in a couple of different places because they're if you look towards what the old, how they used to have them to how they have mm-hmm. the tanks now, they have the, the mm-hmm. three, you know, three fittings, two at the top. Um, you know, one with the, the release, um, you know, valve release, not valve release, yeah, uh, the vent. pressure the vent. relief, uh, vent. So, um, anyway, so he switched to a new tank and he had gotten a bigger tank that held two more ounces. So, uh, we got out to the field, uh, early in the morning for us. So we were out there at like eight o'clock it was perfect. The wind, there was no wind. The sun hadn't really crested over the, the hills of Texas. So we're, you know, sitting in our little valley, um, protected, nothing going on, set up all the equipment. Um, Jim thought he was going to tune the, uh, once again, get back to, to tuning the carburetor, but he had bought, he bought his tack along. And, uh, after he tacked it, it was just running beautifully. So what we had done last time was perfect. And uh, so the engine's running well, um, Jim's like, okay, well, let's go, you know? And so he, he decided, you know, he was going to go ahead and maiden it and he takes the plane off. So the plane takes off and, um, the next thing it has no problem taking off. It's flying scale for Once again, that's one of those things with watching such a large aircraft take off. And then, so in my mind, you're, you're thinking, man, that thing is, it's just putting along, you know, it's just put, 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 putting along, you know? So I'm like, it doesn't sound like the motor's struggling, you know, but the plane's not going nowhere, right? <laughs> you know, and so I'm like, okay, is that an optical illusion just because the plane's big and it's flying okay? So it's it's flying along and it's and it's, so it just starts climbing. And I'm like, well, it's climbing out pretty good. So that, you know, that's climbing is good. So that's always a good thing. So anyway, he's climbing. And then I'm like to the point where I go, hey, Jim, you better, you know, push the nose down or whatever. So he pushes the nose down and the next thing he's like, and I'm like, do you need anything? And he's and he's like, yeah, I, I need some down. So I give him like two or three clicks da- down. I go, is that enough? And he's like, no, no, I need a lot more down. And I'm like, really? Dude, because when I flew it, you know, I had trimmed it out for that windy day, but it, it trimmed right out. And so the only changes we've made from the plane have been, you know, him putting in a new gas tank. And that's been about it. So. I'm really kind of confused as to why now all of a sudden it it wants to climb. So, uh, it's still climbing. And so Jim, uh, we're flying around and, you know, Jim's having, you know, no problems or anything, but he's like, man, this plane is still climbing and I don't know why it's still climbing and I'm, and I'm still putting down in it. Right. So he goes, Hey, do you want to take over? And I go, fine, I'll, I'll, I'll take over. So I, I, I grabbed, I grabbed the sticks and I start flying it. And he's like, he goes, see what I mean? And I go, yeah, I mean, the minute, the second I release the sticks, it definitely wants to climb very, very bad. Not, you know, super bad. Cause I've been clicking on a little bit. I go, but it's definitely wanting to climb. And I'm, and I'm like easing the throttle down more, 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 more. And now I have it at idle throttle and we're still climbing. And, and so once <laughs> again, you know, Jim's putting in a couple of clicks. <laughs> yeah. So he's putting in a few more clicks, a few more clicks, a few more clicks. I'm like more, 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 more. And then finally I get it to where the plane flies semi level right so now i increase the throttle a little bit now it starts it starts climbing again so you know now by this time i've kind of figured out on his radio where the uh where the throttle trim is and i kind of take over put a few more clicks in and uh, so the plane feels okay to me now as we're flying so i'm just flying around again just doing a, a simple pattern and i'm just feeling the plane out and letting go of the sticks and i'm like hey so this is what it's doing he's like oh that looks pretty good and I'm like, yeah, it's, it seems to be flying fine now. So, but the thing is we've put in a boatload of down clicks, right? So I go, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to bring it down now, but now it's like, you know, 50 <laughs> mistakes high. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> let me, let me bring it down. Right. So once again, I go to idle throttle and the plane's just maintaining or climbing ever so slightly. And I'm like, oh, this, this isn't good. 
So I kind of push the nose down and finally I get it down to um, landing into the landing pattern. Right. So now I'm, I'm, I'm just maintaining my, my altitude, but I'm at idle throttle. So I, I set it up, I line up for the, for the runway and the plane, by this time now, the plane is now shifted from barely put, 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 putting along to now it's zoom down, down the runway. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, that was a little fast for, I have an idle power and it's just zooming, just zooming past. And so I, I kind of say to my friend, Jim, I go, Jim, I need less throttle. So can you put a little less throttle in there for me? So he's like, okay. So he puts in a couple of clicks. He goes, that, that should slow it down enough for you. Zoom, you know, like um, uh, Dale Earnhardt, you know, going, yeah. you know, <laughs> driving by. So, he, so he's like, oh, oh no, you know, and I'm like that. He goes, wow, that's still pretty fast. And I go, yeah, yeah, you, you need to slow it down a lot more than that for me, right? So finally, he's like, click, 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 you know, numerous clicks, and then finally, he's like, yeah, it's still not slowing down, isn't it? And I'm like, no. And he's like, you got it on the throttle, and I go, yes. He's like, huh? So I start. You know, hearing the button get into a lower octave. <laughs> and then finally, we get uh, some control, you know, some control over the throttle. Now, the only other thing that Jim said that he had done to the plane was that he made the throttle more linear. So he had been working on the throttle to get a more linear response out of the throttle. So I don't know much about this because I haven't, I've, you know, I've never had to mess with this, mm -hmm. but I did read a little bit about it that with, you know, nitro gas, that in order to get your, your throttle similar to like an electric throttle, you know, that's what I'm used to, but to get it in that linear mode, more in a, a you know, better response, that sometimes you have to mess with the curve of the throttle curve mm -hmm. in order to get it to be similar to that. So the part that I did not know about, or I'm, I'm, I'm just speculating here, is that since he put it in that linear curve, that also that affected how the, the, um, the trim acted, was acting in the same, in that same ratio. So as you were giving the clicks, it, it wasn't the actual same clickage. It was right. that it was on a linear curve with a clickage. So you put in a click, click, click. It's not giving you that click, click, click. It's giving you micro clicks to get the full click since it's linear, right? Until you get to that part. Right. The only way I could think of it was like uh, kind of like inverse expo, right? So the further you get from the corners, you know, that if you know that's how it's affecting the trim, you know. So you have to get so way I, to the you know into the corners in order to get some activity from it. Yeah, that, so like, the better way how I was thinking the better exactly. way Yeah, the better way to explain that is um, if you think about the throttle curve on a ramp versus steps. Mm -hmm. So so if you're coming down the ramp, it's a nice linear slope. So as you're clicking the the throttle lower, it's just stepping down like it would be on a ramp where on a normal uh, bell-shaped curve, it will step down like you're coming off a ladder. So it's like you know, instead of coming down at nice and smooth, it's coming down three, coming down five, coming down, or six, coming down 12, that kind of thing. So it just kind of knocks it, it down so you get it. But does he have a high-low idle on his radio? I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. That'd be I don't, I don't know worth checking out because like on mine, on my gas airplanes, and I, I don't know about Shannon, but on mine, I have a switch that has a high idle and a low idle. So when I come into land, I flick it to low idle, and it takes it all the way down. To no, where he does barely... not. He does it all. He does. He does it by trim, by 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 doing the trim. Mm. Uh, That's how he does his high yeah. low. So right. he right. likes to run it a little higher, rich, you know, depending, mm -hmm. you know. So he has yeah. it going a little fast, and he, as he explained it to me, it's so that when you're buzzing around, doing tricks, doing whatever, and then um, you come back to idle out, you know, you come out out of some maneuver. Mm -hmm come back to idle therefore with the drag of the prop and everything else it won't bog your engine down to where you're, you'll make the engine quit and therefore by having the high idle right. you know guarantees right. that you won't Did, it, you won't go ahead you said you put a bigger tank in right yes. Did you maybe throw the cg off a little oh, yes. i was just about I to was say that okay. too. that was the second okay one. yeah that That's was smart. the second See, thing that we got uh, some brain brain powers working over there. He's like, he's thinking, wow. He, yeah. So that was the, second, the same thing. That was I the was second doing. half of. Yeah. So that was the second half. Time. Yeah. So the, so that was the second half of 
uh, the speculation as to why it was climbing. Cause that was the, like you said, the only change. And he said, yeah. yeah, it was only, he goes, yeah, but it's only two ounces. This plane can take two ounces. And I go, but he goes, the plane's always been tail heavy ish. And I go, well, I could see adding, the, you know, the, the thought of why you'd want to add a bigger tank, but where exactly is that tank coming? You know, where's it coming out in the body of the plane? If, you know, if it's not, if it can't, mm-hmm. if you can't put two, four forward, then you, you didn't add to the, you, you just added to the problem, you know, cause now it's right. more tail heavy. And that right. would explain why it was trying to climb like a banshee, you right. know, uh, upon takeoff and everything. And luck, luckily, it didn't really affect the plane too bad. Um, you know, it wasn't so far aft that it was disastrous. It was just right. enough. Uh, well, Mike, Mike, I know for a fact that you like to fly a lot of your planes a little tail heavy. Tail heavy. I do. Uh, well, I, do. I shouldn't say that. I, I shouldn't say that exactly because that may throw off the audience. Okay, so. Folks, you got to realize that when, you know, manufacturers make a plane, they and they give you a CG, they don't give you the optimum CG to give you the best resolution on the aircraft. They give you something that for 90 percent of the people, they won't have a problem with it. And that is having a nose heavy plane. And by having a nose heavy plane, they're all going to fly and you can trim that, you know, heaviness out. But as opposed to putting it right on the CG, so it's, you know, it's really sharp on the, on the tricks and it's really sharp on your landings. And they, they tend to stay away from that because then that's when they start getting complaints and getting planes returned because guys don't set their planes upright. And right. your A-10 is, is a good um, yep. representative of that, right? It was very nose heavy. Very, very nose heavy. But, you know, they produce yeah. it for the and masses. Then, and then they, you know, and, yep. and so it's something that they can do where they they manufacture it, and then you know they kind of send uh, you know hundreds of millions of these things, or maybe not hundreds of millions, but several hundred thousands of them out, and it just makes for a clean. You know, they take the average uh, of the the forward and the aft CG, and they split it right down the middle and say, okay, here you go. If it's if if it's if it's uncontrollable at 105 millimeters from the leading edge, and it's hard to fly you know hard to get it off the ground at 100 millimeters they're going to say okay well we want we think the cg should be at 100 between 100 and 102 right or 103 they really won't give you that 105 which is the tail end of it but but that is where i like to fly my airplanes right on the verge of that tail end and you uh from what i understand after this flight demonstrated that why i like to fly it that way I yeah. believe. Yeah. So it, uh, the, the nice part about the plane that we learned uh, when I finally lined it up, I mean, when we finally conquered the throttle issue and I got it to, to slow down, was that um, once I got it to slow down and then it started doing that, you know, messing with my head, it was put putting around the field. Just, you know, I'm just, I was just like, is it going to stall? Is it not going to stall? Uh, <laughs> no, it seems to be doing well. And I just set it up for uh, my approach, and I just, it was like somebody put butter on the field. Just smeared yeah. it with butter, and I just greased yeah. it in there. Whoo. Yes, it made that whoo sound. <laughs> and a little sizzle, like putting bacon in the pan type of, type oh, of yeah, landing. A little... it was just, it just came to land. And, and, and even Jim was like, whoa, you didn't splay the gear or nothing. That He goes, the gear barely even moved. That was awesome. And I'm just yeah. like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's fine. Really nice now, you know, as opposed to that right. first landing. But yeah, it, it, um, a- after we kind of tackled those two issues or really one, just the, it was the, well, the mm-hmm. throttle and the, and the climbing issue. Once we kind of got that under control, the plane just flew really, really, really nice. I mean, it was enjoyable to fly just because it was so scale. Like I said, I was a little worried, you know, Jim had told me about the short coupling of the aircraft and that's what I was always in the back of my head was that. You know, I didn't want to get a situation getting a too slow, short coupling. You know, those two things don't mix. And, you know, mm-hmm. once again, this plane is rather important to him. You know, A, it took him a long time to put together. Like we said, he planted the seed, grew the tree, you know, planed the right. himself, you know, <laughs> built the lumber <laughs> mill, the whole, the whole nine yards. So, I mean, he has a lot mm-hmm. invested in this aircraft. So that's always in the back of my head whenever I'm flying it that, you know, this plane's very important to him. Right. And, yeah. Um, but it, it, it all worked out. There was, you know, the, the plane, you know, nothing, nothing serious happened. It, it was way smoother. I mean, I know that was a long explanation for what had happened, but it was way better than that first maiden. 
I mean, you know, it was two things that were easily controlled with two people, you know, helping out over the radio so I could just concentrate on flying. And he was, you know, moving my trims and stuff for me. That that worked out rather well. So quick question for you. Did Once you guys got done with this and you kind of got it back on the ground, did you mechanically readjust the tail section or did you just leave it where it was? We just left everything at where it was at that time. So we didn't touch anything. Um, I The first thing I did was I was just looking at mechanically just how much down you had to have. And once again, when you looked, when I looked at it, I'm just like, wow, it doesn't look like there's barely any down in that at all. So once again, I was like, well, okay, it, you know, was, was that a, a, you know, a mechanical, you know, you know, do we make that mechanical thing or do I just leave what's in there? Or do we put in a less, a little less fuel and see what happens, you know, type of thing. I, that, that's what was worrying me. You know, that's what I was th- kind of thinking about. So, okay. but unfortunately, yeah. um, shortly after we he- we landed, the wind picked back up, you know, by that time it was nine o'clock, nine thirty. wind was gusting and we didn't fly the, the, we didn't fly the plane again, even though Jim's like, Hey, you want to fly again? And I'm like, yeah, no, I, <laughs> when the wind starts doing the crazy stuff yeah. out of the field, I'm not going to yeah. take your precious plane and, and, and go fly it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, enough you know, of that. first thing in the morning with no wind, you know, that, that way we could take that variable out. So. Sure. But you did get to fly something else, though, right? Or Jim actually? Uh, yeah, we, uh, we, yeah, uh, we did fly uh, Jim's Dolphin. So this is <laughs> the Dolphin. Okay, so the Dolphin's been like, like a kind of a work workhorse plane for Jim. Um, he's had the plane forever. Uh, I think uh, as long as he's had the soft with the camel. Where the camel hasn't flown too much, Jim has just been flying the piss out of the dolphin. You know, it's just been a plane, a go-to plane for him. He had it for years. And this year, uh, about two two or three months ago, we were out flying, and Jim was like, you know, I really do like this plane. And, and now that I have this gas engine on it, you know, it's it, it flies forever. It's, it's you know, the, the motor's getting broken in. It's flying better and better and better. Um, and he goes, the best part about this thing, I've never crashed this plane. And and oh, I kind of looked at him. I go, "Oh, why? Why'd you say that?" <laughs> and and right, I mean, the very next flight that we went up to fly, you know, Jim got disoriented and the he just crashed the plane. And I'm like, "Oh, wow! You haven't you haven't crashed this plane in like 15 years. You've never crashed it all the whole time you've owned it. You mentioned that, and then of course you crash it. You know that the RC gods were not uh, not favorable mm-hmm. with that. But uh, you know, Jim with his mastery of fixing the plane had it back you know you you couldn't even tell that it crashed and then um mike like i said mike came down a couple of weeks later or you know just or a couple of weeks ago uh when he was going to fly he he you know the plane wasn't quite up to speed he was very close to the edge of the the field with the grass you know it was just a you know series of events and he ended up cartwheeling the plane and he kind of you know broke up the wing and broke up the body a little bit and you know we were kind of all down about it um and once again uh jim you know spent a week his wife was a little pissed because she didn't see him for that week you know but he put the plane back together (laughs) and it came back looking spectacular and we flew it like the you know a week before and the plane flew absolutely fine um and i had mentioned to him that last flight i had mentioned to him that uh Maybe we should put um, a gyro, you know, if he had some spare gyros or something at the house, to, we should throw a gyro in this plane. And I and I think it would work a little bit better because I was having a problem that once you got the throttle under half, it, you know, it definitely would start diving, not diving, but it would start dropping out of the sky. And that and that had to do it once again with that whole linear old throttle, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. getting the throttle set up correctly. Um, so I was having issues with that and. And once again, with the, the way the crosswind works at that field, I was like, yeah, you know, probably cause, uh, the, to back up, he has uh, another plane called the Kingfisher, which is a, uh, a foamy. And it's very similar to the Fun Cub. Um, the plane's great. He, we, he threw a gyro in that for another guy that, that is just beginning learning how to fly um, that comes out with Jim. Um, and so he had thrown this gyro out on the thing and we had, you know, figured it all out and we tested it on the buddy box and it worked fabulously. I mean, it just works so much, so well. It makes any, anybody doing a landing, 
looks like you're a super expert. I mean, it, it just, that, that gyro really helps out to smooth out your landings and makes them look beautiful. It helps with your approaches, the whole nine yards. So after seeing that thing fly, go, Hey, if you have any more of those gyros, I think you should throw one in, you know, in the dolphin. So Jim's like, yeah, I think you're right. So when he comes out there, uh, this time when we, we, after we flew the camel and wind pick back up, he goes, Hey, let's fly the dolphin. I go, Hey, that sounds great. He goes, well, I put it, I put a gyro in that thing. Let's, you know, let's go ahead and test, test it out, make sure the gyro is working properly. And then we'll go fly it. And I go, sounds good. So we go through the whole, the whole scenario of setting it up. Well, it was already set up. Jim had already set it up, but we tested it. You know, I held it and had him turn up the gain to go to high rate. And we would, you know, put it in the dive, see if the tail, you know, comes up and left, right, and made sure everything was working right. And it was, um, then we were getting ready to fly. Um, and so, uh, before, you know, I had the radio cause I, I had started it up, fueled the plane and stuff. Um, and I made sure that the rate, you know, this time that the, um, the radio allows you to turn the gyro on and off. So I made sure the gyro was off, reconfirmed it. And then, uh, Jim was going to go ahead and, and take it off for the maiden. And once again, um, the plane, the last time we flew it, flew perfect and we had trimmed it out and everything, but you know, now it, we have a brand new receiver in it. Um, because he, he had gotten, uh, one of those lemon receivers, uh, with, uh, the gyro built into it, mm-hmm. you know, in this plane. So now, you know, every, you know, everything's, you know, is off. So whatever settings we had before, you know, won't work for this aircraft. So it's, you know, like you said, right. a brand new maiden in the sense. So, um, unfortunately, uh, upon takeoff, it was a beautiful, it was a beautiful takeoff. Um, Jim was doing, you know, uh, a classic takeoff and everything. It was, it left, it, you know, left, was t- departing the field perfectly. He got it about, I don't know, 20, 25 feet off the ground. And I, you know, this is where we're not sure if we had interference on the receiver, or, you know, on the actual receiver, um, whether it was something with the plane, a linkage problem, we're not entirely sure what was going on with that um but the plane kind of tilted to the right uh a little bit um it continued to tilt to the right and you know unfortunately um you know it it just got into an attitude uh was unrecoverable i couldn't get to the you know to the aircraft in time because i was you know, standing behind Jim a couple of feet, right. uh, he right. had just kind of moved a couple of feet in front of me, you know, so I was, everything was happening nice and smoothly. So I didn't think there would be any trouble with this particular plane. Um, so I was not within arm's reach to, you know, in order to grab it or do it, you know, take any control. And unfortunately Jim crashed it and it looked like somebody spiking a football when he, when he hit. Oh. So when we got up there, there was no, there was no putting the pieces back together because now it was all balsa yeah. wood. You know, I mean, right. it, well, it was made right. from balsa wood, but I mean, balsa sawdust. Re- re-kitted. So, right. Yeah, it's re-kitted. Yeah. <laughs> no, in fact, a kit form. That's a good one. Um, but it wasn't die cut. It wasn't die cut, that's for sure. So uh, it was more yeah. sawdust. Um, so unfortunately, that that plane was trashed. But I, 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 I turned to Jim and I go, well, the good news is, from when Mike uh, was down here, uh, AZ Mike was, uh, AK Mike was down here. I said, the good thing was I'd looked up the, the plane and saw you can buy a replacement. So we can get, we can buy, or you can get a replacement airframe. I will tell you the weirdest part about it, gentlemen, I've spent another week just looking for balsa kits, not just that particular model. I'm talking about balsa kits mm-hmm. for nitro airplanes and you would think i was looking for unattainium i mean it, i have not been able to find one or find one at a decent price i mean the planes seem to be all i mean marked up like a third two thirds higher than they they were seemingly six months ago that wow. dolphin which was in stock you know less everywhere. than a month ago now is is not yeah it was in stock everywhere now i cannot find that that aircraft anywhere and and any plane that's similar to it like tower hobbies you know i didn't realize that they had went out of business or whatever or now they're uh, you know they're getting cleaned out or whatever but they they yeah they 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 had nothing i mean i was just looking all over couldn't couldn't find a kit i went to all like value hobbies i went to all all these different hobby stores where i i used to get stuff hobby king nothing i mean 
it's like a little desert mini desert out there for aircraft. So yeah, yeah, that's, that's the most disturbing thing that, you know, you want to get a kit plane, you know, you might as well be looking for, go back to building your own, plant the tree. (laughs) You're looking for gold. It's, it's pretty bad. We're we're going to Pegasus hobbies in uh, Upland, California. They have a lot. That's true. Oh, there you go. (laughs) Uh, I I did not look there. Yeah. yeah, Pegasus, and then uh, I actually sent you an e uh, an eBay link there, Jay. So it, they, the okay. guy was look. advertising that he had some dolphins for sale, but I don't know if he sold them yet or not. But you can check it and see. So, All right, I will definitely well, check that up. And, uh, yeah, well, that's kind of unfortunate that uh, you know accidents do happen, and we all have those stories where something you know catastrophic went up, went on. But uh, unfortunately for Jim, we. Uh, I t- I will jump on the web in my little off time and that I do have and uh, see if we can't find him something. But uh, unfortunately, yeah, our time is too. up. Yeah, unfortunately, our time is up. But uh, Shannon, he can look around as well. And uh, Shannon's going to Hawaii, so we're going to wish him best of luck. Uh, he's going to have to come back and tell us about his yeah, there uh, you go. over there. <laughs> he's got something special planned over there that uh, I think yep. they, uh, he'll, he can tell. Yeah, he can tell us uh, on the next go round when he gets back. But uh, other than that, yep, um, I think uh, we might have some stories when uh, when I get down there if uh, Jay can work it out. Where I've got a little, I got about a day in Austin uh, after work, and so I think Jay and I are going to try and hook up. So hopefully we'll have some shenanigans going on that time. We'll, uh, we'll let everybody know. But for now, uh, I'm uh, Arizona Mike here on the road in Texas. And I'm Jay from the hills of Texas. And Shanji in Mesa AZ. And we got to appreciate That's Shannon. Right. He, uh, he was unit. running errands. Yeah, he was running errands and stopped off to join us on the podcast. So we really appreciate him doing that. <laughs> well, let's anytime, see. Man, from the Park anytime. Fire Park. Just give me, from the... give me, give me more than five minutes to, to, to yeah, set up. Yeah, I know. Well, I had told <laughs> him. I just said, hey, so... we're jumping on. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> it was a. Uh, it was a scheduling error on my part. I didn't realize the week got away from me. So, well, uh, from the Park Fire Podcast, I was for we'll a see phone you. Phone booth to like uh, to change into. <laughs> I don't think you That's can get a funny. phone yeah. booth anymore. Yeah, I couldn't find yeah, one. I don't even think they have those anymore. Yeah. Oh. All right. My friend Pete's well, got one up in Alaska. <laughs> That's true. He does up there. So, all righty, guys. We'll see you in two Sweet. weeks. Let's fly. You have been listening to the Park Flyer Podcast. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to your next visit. Please give our show a star rating and review, and feel free to email us your questions, topics, or suggestions to parkflyerpodcast at gmail.com.